everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life. My name is Dr. Cindy Wong and today I want to talk about some of the tests you'll be taking while you're in residency. So the first standardized test I want to talk about during residency is step three. Oh man, not only have you taken step one and step two, now you still have to take step three. Yes, I know, we're pathology and we there's nothing about pathology on step three, practically like zero questions related to pathology on step three, but it's kind of required for you to be a doctor. That said, if any time in your entire life where P equals MD, this is truly it. P truly equals pathology. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, that was all such a bad joke. So step three, no one pathology truly cares about your score in step three. It is not really going to play a major factor in how you're going to get into fellowship. It's not going to play a ma major factor in if you're going to get a job. Uh, it is really something you just need to pass and move on with your life. For people who don't know what it is, step three is a two day exam. Ugh. Yeah, two day exam also relatively expensive and it does have a basically very similar application or registration style as step two where you have to uh, do some formal forms and then you have to you know do a picture get everything you need to do send them everything including money it is something that you cannot do until you have your med school diploma basically you cannot take it while you're still in med school you have to wait until you graduate before you can register for it for anyone who wants to game the system and take step three in medical school unfortunately you cannot there are people who will take step three in the summer gap between finishing medical school and starting residency in july so if you can basically if your medical school is one of those that graduate in like april or may you could then register right away and hope to get a spot to take the test in june and then you take the test in late june and then that's it and you never have to worry about it again you don't have to worry about it while you're in residency for me i definitely did not do that i basically kind of just planned my wedding and got married and then started residency. So I had no time to take step three. So me and I would imagine a good chunk of pathology residents usually take step three in the beginning of their residency as a PGY-1. I would strongly recommend that if you're not someone who has great memory for things that you no longer use, I would recommend that you take steps three as early as possible in PGY-1. I wouldn't say take it super right away. I wouldn't do it in July or August because you want to use your first few months in residency to get used to the residency. That way you will have integrated, you will have, you know, a know about the people, what you do. And then once you have that basic knowledge of your department established, a good time to take steps three is usually in the late fall, October and November. And I feel like most most of my co-residents took it at that time. And I think it's a really good time because it's not too many months into residency where you forgot a lot of the medicine things that you learned previously, but it's also uh, well enough into residency where you've done a few rotations and then you kind of have a basic understanding of what's going on so you feel less stressed. Don't worry too much about studying so for example well i don't even know how well this applies because when i took step one the step one score was like d test right it was the d test you have to study for a long long time back in the day god i feel like a dinosaur back in the day when you had to take step one they'll give you a month and a half two months three months i don't know i've heard some medical schools give you six months to study for step one I, oh I, I yeah instead of spending all that time for step three, honestly, you really need to study for maybe like a month, month and a half, two at best. And there, unfortunately, there's no such thing as dedicated study time anymore in pathology, at least not while you're still a fresh PGY-1. If you want time to study for uh, step three, it's usually done, you know, when you have lighter rotations or on the weekends at night. And that said, uh, the way I took step three is I had a month of COAG, which is a CP rotation. And 
and basically I use the free time in between the the coag you know lectures and reports I had to write. I would study for step three. I'll study、uh, at night, and then I also go to the library on the weekends, and I'll study step three for a couple of hours every you know Saturday Sunday. And I did that for a little over a month. So I started studying for it basically in October, and I took my exam first week of November or something like that, and、uh, I passed. So yay, P equals M D slash pathology, however you want to call it. Not a stressful thing. <laughs> I guess that's the biggest thing I want to emphasize for step three. If you are curious for step three studying strategies,、uh, I would highly recommend the U World, and I highly recommend you buy the. I'm not sure if it's two separate, but you basically you buy the U World the questions as well as U World the simulated situations. Because step three is a two day exam, on the second day you have this thing called C S. Or patient interaction, or pseudo patient interaction, where you take it on a computer, and they'll give you all the situations, and then you will manage the clinical scenario, and then either you miserably fail if the patient dies on you, or your time passes after a certain amount of time, and it's graded based on basically have you done enough to you know diagnose, treat your patient. Patient, uh, uh, your virtual patient. Honestly, doing the U World the questions is very much like doing U World for step one and two. But for me, I think practicing the CCS component through U World really helped me a lot. Because I, honestly, if I didn't do it, I probably would fail that portion of step three and then you know not pass this. But、uh, like I said, I think I passed step three with、oh, like three or five points above the minimal pass rate. And hey, look at me and look at where I am now. Clearly, it does not matter, right? All right, so that's step three. So the next set of tests you have to take in residency is. Uh, for pathology, at least it's called the RISE, and that is basically the in-house exam that is given to the residents every year to kind of monitor their progress through residency. That's what it's meant to do, but you know, I don't.、Uh, let me explain. The RISE is basically called the Resident in Service Exam, and it happens to every resident.、It、usually happens sometime during March, and the result sometime comes out、um, middle to late April. So this is supposed to be a closed book proctored exam, but this exam is meant to evaluate you as a resident on how well you're doing in terms of your pathology knowledge base. And honestly, I would say this test and the result. Means very little because different programs and different residents treat it completely different. There are programs out there where this actually matters, and the score and everything goes in towards your like evaluation as you go through residency. And there's places where you know this is just like a another thing you have to do just. For the sake of doing it, there are residents who study, 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 study. There are programs who actually have rice review sessions, and then there are programs like where I went to, where it was like, oh, the rice is coming. Don't forget to take it. <laughs> so I've never studied for a rice,、um, and I would say this is something that I advice I receive from my senior residents and me giving to you now is especially if you're first year, if this is. Your first year, and this is your first time taking your rise. I recommend to study as little to no studying for the rise. Do whatever you're doing in residency to you know to learn and things, but don't sit down and go through like question books just for the rise. The idea is if you score the lowest on this exam. Then you could only get better as you learn more and more through the years, and the rise number score will for sure you know. Get better throughout the years as well. So that is just a little advice I received, and I'm passing it on because I think it's good advice, and also just takes the stress out of this exam. And because it does not simulate the boards very well at all, the questions they ask here and questions on the boards are very different, and the ratio of questions they ask on the rise versus the ratio of questions they ask for the boards are also completely different. So the one thing I want to say to give credit to the rise exam would be as a PGY four, they there's a common acceptance that if you get a certain percentile on the rise, then you should feel better about your chances of passing the boards. That said, <laughs>、uh, I'm pretty sure as a PGY four. 
I got like less than 25 percentile on the rise and um, according to that I'm predicted to fail my boards but look at me I passed my boards I did my fellowship and I soon to be attending like I said take these scores with a grain of salt they really doesn't mean anything so you can use it as an eternal review of things that you are weak in so for example when I was taking my rise I always knew my psychology was my weakest link and you know that's why I spend a lot more time studying for it when I was studying for my boards. So that is uh, the rise for you. It is as important as I guess your program wants it to be or as you want it to be and it is as little importance as you or your program is willing to let it be. The last major standardized test I want to talk about and it is the, basically the only standardized test that matters as a pathology resident it is the pathology boards. This is the test. This is the test to pass. And once again, P equals MD. So the pathology boards is something you take at the end of your fourth year or your third year, depending on which track of your APCP four year combined, then you take it at the end of your fourth year. If you're AP or CP three year track, then you take it at the end of your third year. So um, basically I've made uh, two very in-depth video about the pathology boards. I will link them down below. So hopefully if you have any questions past what I'm about to tell you, you can find all that information down below. All right, so it's something you take at the end of your uh, fourth year and it's something that you have to register about basically the winter of your fourth year to take for a test that happens in the late spring of your fourth year. And do not miss that deadline for registration. I think the deadline is really early, like uh, middle of winter. And when it comes to taking the boards, it usually happens, uh, people actually sit to take the boards between May and June. In the past few years, because of COVID, the boards have been at testing centers and let's hope it stays in testing centers and no one ever have to go to Florida and take it in person at the Florida Center. Anyways, so if you want to find out more about what I mean by going to Florida, also check out my videos down below. And then the results come out in July. So this is one of the most important tests because if you don't pass it, you can't practice as a pathologist. Uh, uh, but that said, P equals MD. You just need to pass the boards. It doesn't matter how thinly you pass it, it just needs to pass. Even if you're like, they do give you a number on the board. They give you a, a number and they'll tell you what percentile in each like subspecialty you scored in. And um, if you got say like three points from that score of passing, you still fail. Unfortunately, there's no rounding up, but it doesn't matter if the pass a rate is this number and you pass by two points. You still pass, but if you lower than two numbers, you failed. The boards, it is very tough. It definitely requires a lot of setting for, and there's probably also a reason why a lot of fourth year schedules seem so easy towards the second half is because the lighter rotations allow the residents to study for boards. So don't get too jealous, you PGY ones and two seeing your <laughs> PGY fours having like basically a bunch of electives and vacations stacked up towards the end of their fourth year. It's not all fun and games. It's a lot of like hard hardcore studying. So yeah, that's it. That is the basically three very important types of exams you have to take in residency. And when you're done with residency, you'll never have to take another standardized test again because the ABP finally decided that they're no longer going to do the 10-year recertification test for your boards. You are now going to do, uh, you're going to do questions every quarter until you stop doing these to basically to give up your board certification, but you'll go on until the end of time taking these quarterly questions to keep your board certification. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you found it very useful. And please, if you enjoy the content I make, please like, please subscribe, and I will see everyone next time. Bye.